On the breakfast, Paris Saint-Germain defender Ashraf Hakimi's wife uh, won't be getting much money following their divorce after it was revealed the Moroccan star had registered all his properties and assets under his mother Sadia Mout's name. And this morning uh, on the breakfast, we're asking is this approach by Hakimi one that the husbands should adopt in this age of increased divorce, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. And also, uh, barring any last-minute change of plans, the federal government of Nigeria will be paying or begin payment of planned increase in civil servants' pay by the end of this month. Um, we're looking at a 40% increase in pay. This uh, will be the focus of our second discussion right here on The Breakfast. And of course, as usual, we'll have a look at what the papers say uh, this morning. We call it off the press. Uh, some interesting uh, headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies today. All right, we're back, and it's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. Back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa today, the 19th of April, 2023. My name is Kofi Bartels, flying solo this morning on The Breakfast. Once again, you're welcome. Uh, before we get into the top trending uh, stories, we'll take a look at um, the uh, weather, I'm sorry, the traffic reports, of course. Um, we have uh, weather updates as well coming your way. We'll take those weather updates uh, and then we will um, delve straight into uh, the, um, the, the first conversations on the the trending stories this morning on the breakfast time um, uh, we can bring you updates on traffic from lagos and like we always say if you are watching this program from other parts um, of the country you can as well also um let us know you know via whatsapp or you know via twitter uh, at plus tv africa what the traffic situation is like uh where you are for those making their way through nigeria's commercial nerve center um, at Ebutero, we told vehicular movement from Carter Bridge is good down to Leventis uh, to link the inner road and outer marina. Uh, CMS Bridge descending UBA roundabout is uh, on fast movement towards Akbombo. Uh, quite interesting. That bridge really hasn't been um, been opened, but we hear that uh, by next month at Akbombo Bridge uh, on the Eco Bridge stretch will be open to traffic. Uh, appreciable movement from Broad Street connecting a pom bomb on the bridge en route or lower bow is very much okay, according to Lagos State Traffic Management Agency, uh, as well from Leventis towards a leg butter bridge through uh, to police post. Everything is moving s smoothly. Uh, we're told traffic movement uh, from NNPC inward canoe is appreciable, aside the alternation by the canoe roundabout. If you know Lagos well, you know where we're talking about. Uh, Chivita connecting uh, Lukman uh, at Tobajo uh, down to Swimming Pool Junction is on a steady movement. Hollandia Way to connect Kolaole Shonibari down to Jesus House is good. Aside the traffic lights alternation uh, is what the uh, Lagos State Traffic Management Agency is saying. Movement in Wadajao Gate is an appreciable uh, movement, is what they, they call it, uh, besides the alternation at Awoni Elemo, uh, Oluto Siajai, and Latif Salami Junctions, respectively. Osolo Way from Aye inward Aswani Junction is good. Uh, towards Asha Afi Rogun Junction is a steady moving traffic due to uh, alternation. Traffic connecting 7 and 8 is slow due to uh, the alternation coupled with human uh, activities around uh, 7 and 8. Uh, uh, Paco inwards Nacho Airport is good. Uh, both inward and outward journey to Oshodi is what the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency is, uh, is saying. Okay, and um, we hear DHL inwards 5 star is still connecting uh, the Amazon band is slow. And that's what uh, the latest, this is about uh, 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes ago, just for those who are wondering what time these traffic reports were updated or uploaded by the Lagos State Traffic Management uh, Agency who have been doing a good job. 
um so this should be about about 25 minutes ago let's call it that okay there's a traffic situation as at 6 35 a.m the traffic situation as at 6 35 a.m um we'll bring you more and of course you can always share your traffic updates with us from wherever you're watching even for those who are watching from outside nigeria um you can do the same as well um and we'll be glad to hear from you let's take a break and we'll bring you the weather reports after which we'll return uh, to look at the top trending stories. Please stay with us. All right, uh, thank you very much. Welcome back. And of course, uh, we can now look at the top trending stories. Let's start with the first one, um, which happens to be from, uh, it's a human angle, human interest story. Really uh, uh, a sad one. Sexually abused boy commits suicide after a radio station reveals uh, his identity. Ah, it's it's, 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 it's um, sad. All right, it's really sad, and uh, um, you know it's from another part of the world. But you know, when you think about it, it's something that I think we should learn from. You know, because uh, I happen to work on radio as well every single night into the morning. Uh, it's something that I do on a daily basis, barring weekends. And um, this is a 15-year-old sex abuse victim in the Eastern European city of Poland. Um, his name is Mokalaj or Mikolaj. Uh, Felix, a 15-year-old sex abuse victim, uh, reportedly killed himself after his identity was made public uh, by state-owned Radio Szczecin uh, in the Polish city of Szczecin. Um, the radio station has come under fire for releasing the identity of the teenager, identified as the son of a local opposition politician. Uh, many believe the radio station was involved in a political uh, hit job that revealed the identity of a 15-year-old sex abuse victim. Uh, Master Felix committed suicide in March at the family's Shazin home uh, after being publicly identified as a victim of a jail pedophile. Uh, the deceased mother, Magdalena, represents a civic platform, the main opposition party to the ruling party in Parliament. And you can now see the political twist that some people think was behind this radio station revealing the identity of the boy. Mm. Um, well, uh, the a liberal LGBTQ rights advocate from Shazin by the name of uh, Krzysztof Falinski, Fal 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 um, who is said to have abused or alleged to have abused the youngster, was found guilty in 2021 and has since been in prison, so it's no longer an allegation he actually did it. Um, but his victims have never been named in the media. This is 2021, uh, two years ago. All right. Uh, however, in December, the editor in chief of Radio Shazin, Thomas uh, Duklanowski, uh, revealed the identity of Mr. Falinski's victim on the station's website, uh, stating the son of a well known legislator was among those that he uh, abused. Uh, the only Shazin based lawmaker whose family matched every description in Mr. Uh, Duklaunowski's report was 
Miss Felix. And according to the family's lawyer, the young boy started getting uh, phone calls and text messages from friends inquiring if he had been sexually molested soon after Radio uh, Shazin reported the information. That list included uh, messages from his mother's political opponents as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really sad indeed. Uh, we hear it wasn't just his classmates who learned about his abuse. The whole of Poland found out, according to uh, the lawyer, he says you don't need to be an expert in child psychology to understand that this was very upsetting for um, the young man. So, you know, um, there isn't much to say about this down to really say that we in the media in Africa should also um, uh, learn from this, learn from this, their ethics and their rules and regulations as far as um, the conduct of our activities are concerned. You know, we should always uh, try our best to We in the media should always, always try our best to, you know, um, uh, yeah, realize that there are human beings behind um, these, these stories and uh, the ethics are, are very well spelled out. You know, yesterday I was going through my Twitter feed and I noticed that um, uh, there's a story that was f floated, you know, about Arsenal Football Club. And, you know, as a follower of English football and, you know, uh, support of the Arsenal club in the England English League. I took interest in that story. What was it about? Um, the Arsenal footballers went for the last match against uh, West Ham United. It's a London derby because both clubs are in London. So it's a big deal to supporters of both clubs. And there was a film that the football club put on its Twitter handle. Uh, maybe 45 second, 30 second clip showing the footballers of Arsenal signing the t-shirt for the mascot for the day. You know, the kids that these um, teams walk out onto the field with, they call these children mascots, okay? And most times, for instance, for a club like Arsenal, it's, I think, the most community-focused uh, uh, club in England, Arsenal. You know, do a lot of things to really highlight their involvement in the local community, even in the adverts, even with the LGBTQ issues. That's how deeply they are involved in their community. Um, so, so what someone did was took that clip and accused the Arsenal players of being proud, of being uh, you know, uh, snobbish, of being horrible and terrible. Because whilst, whilst all the players stood in line to sign the t-shirt of that, of that child, um, they did not say anything to that child. This girl was invited by the club her parents were invited by the club, her father in particular, they hosted the child for the day, gave her, you know, jerseys and gave her the privilege to walk with the players onto the field and stand on the field for the anthem and everything. You know, give her a beautiful day to do this every single match day. And so they said, oh, that the players did not, and some players did not even talk to the girl. They didn't say hi. And you can see the abuse and the insults and you know a lot of things that it rained on these players because of that and some people said hey wait a minute you take just 45 second or 30 second clip you don't even know what happened the entire game especially on the day that these footballers are, are playing a very important match because they've not won the, the title in 20 years or more if not 30, 20 years or more yeah and then you now turn it into a hate campaign but why am i like you know um, citing this example you see, in this Twitter crazy age, you know, where we, we rush to just do everything without thinking about the consequences. And the media is all left out because all these are forms of media. I mean, social media is a form of media where we'll just take something and just put it out there. Sometimes for likes, sometimes for retweets, sometimes for follows, sometimes to trend. And we don't think about the psychological effect on the people involved. Now, you can see with this young man in Poland, he's taking his life. The are star players that may be earning a lot of money, but are human beings as well. You know, who knows if they had any ulterior motive in mind. I saw the players standing in line, standing in line, on just a few minutes before they went onto the field to play. Very important match to sign Jesse's. And someone said they were so terrible, 
for doing that. All right? So, so um, this is very important, something that we need to uh, uh, be aware of, you know, that victims need the most protection, um, you know, wh whoever they are, wherever they are, uh, they need the most protection. It's all about the victims, um, and that's, that's that. Um, so in, in our profession, we are, we are told that we need to be discreet. You know, the, the ethics do a lot of other things, but it's so clear. Um, from what the reports are saying, that it's not as if a guy in, in Poland, the editor-in-chief in that radio station, they didn't know his job, okay? He knew his job, but he, he may have had an ulterior motive. Maybe there was a political campaign against the, the lady. They, maybe he didn't know the boy would take his life. So it's very important. It's very important to, to be aware of these things. You know, even social media. Sometimes I would say to myself and to some other people that social media may not be so healthy sometimes for mental health you know so the way we even expose ourselves to some of these things very important let's protect our, our mental health let's protect the mental health of our uh, of our children okay of our children it's very important it's very important and let's also protect the victims okay let's protect the victims as well uh, very important and we'll move on uh, from that to another one and uh, i don't know if you have we're going to roll a video if we will, please, let's show. This is um, a fully loaded truck uh, crushing three vehicles in, in Lagos. Just watch this in, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, um, uh, uh, there were no casualties recorded as a fully loaded truck uh, crushed three vehicles in Lagos. Um, Okay, there you can see it on your screen. I do not have the full details of this particular incident. Um, but you can see it looks like a fuel tanker. It actually looks like a fuel uh, uh, tanker. Um, and you can see that the traffic, um, the traffic is moving in a particular uh, direction. You can see the direction of the, the vehicle. Now, I don't know how that vehicle got to be in that position where it is facing, you know, directly facing the, the tanker. I don't know how it got to be in that position, but it's not the first time that a, a tanker has had such an accident. I mean, <laughs> some will say only in Lagos. Look at, look at, look at the direction of the vehicle. So it is possible, I don't know, maybe the, the vehicle was in front of the tanker, you know, maybe it was coming from the other side. I do not know. All right. I do not know. But this looks like... Um, the Bagada Bridge in Ifako. You know, I use the like this a lot, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, this looks like the Bagada Bridge in Ifako. All right. And um, uh, I think the Lagos State Management Traffic Management Agency also had uh, put the information out on its Twitter handle. This is what they wrote. Uh, quote, a multiple accident just occurred while descending uh, the Bagada Bridge in what Ifako. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's, that's correct. Uh, this accident involved a loaded tanker and three other vehicles. Um, so, so we're not told how it happened. Um, I think that will also encourage the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency to um, do the investigations and also tell us what happened so that people can learn from the situation. You know, but, but this isn't the first time, all right? It's not the first time we're hearing uh, that uh, fuel tankers crushed vehicles. It happens all the time. Um, I think it was last, okay, in February, these are headlines from some of our newspapers. In February, in the Punch newspaper, February, February 1, 2023, one killed as tanker crashes three tricycles in Lagos. One killed, one person killed, as tanker crashes three tricycles in Lagos. Another headline, that's on, that was on 1st February. Another headline from 4th January 2023, fuel tanker crashes motorcycle rider in Lagos. 4th January, same thing. Okay? It's another one. Petrol tanker, well, petrol tanker crushes three vehicles on Lagos Ibarra Expressway. That's another one. From 2016, from 2016, petrol tanker crushes three vehicles on Lagos Ibarra Expressway. 2016. 2018, petrol tanker crushes five cars on New Year's Eve in Lagos. 
2021, one dies as gas tanker crushes cars in Ogun State, which is nearby Lagos State. And so we can see that this is, um, uh, it's not new. It happens a lot. This is another one. 2020, one passenger dies, others injured as fuel tanker crushes vehicle on Lagos Ibano Highway. You know, it's really sad. This is another one from 2020. Two dead, seven rescued as three trucks fuel tanker crash passenger bus. We could go on and on and on and on. You know, it, it, it's really unfortunate. I've been in a situation where I was in a vehicle at night going to work, you know, somewhere around Yaba, trying to work, because there was a lot of traffic in Lagos. I think it was just before the governorship election. And everybody was speeding up and there was traffic and all that. And you had these, these, these heavy duty trucks, these trailer trucks. Um, these were not, yeah, these were tankers. Yes, they were petrol tankers. And the way these guys were speeding, there were two. It was as if they were in a Formula One race. It was as if they were in a Formula One race. Driving, trying to, and I was wondering what's going on. Now, the way they were speeding, one almost hit the other. I was in a vehicle, I told the, the, the driver who was taking me to work at the time, to, to clear, to just be on one lane, you understand? And I said, the way these guys are driving, I hope they don't hit us. Fortunately, and I say fortunately, the second one, because he was driving so fast, at the point I saw my applying his brakes, because he was trying to avoid barging into another car. He hit a car. I think it was a Venza, if I'm not mistaken. I remember clearly. And when we got to that point, because they had to allow them to overtake us, and they were faster than us, speeding. Why I say fortunately he hit a car was that he was owned by or had a, a military personnel in that vehicle. And I said, very good. It was made more damage. No one was, no one was hurt. I saw that. You know, so at least you know that the, the, the soldier will do justice to, to the, the situation. Mm -hmm. You know, they drive rec recklessly. And I think that with all these headlines that I've read from 2016 to 2023, it's so clear. It's so clear that... Um, uh, 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 we have a problem on our hands, you know. It's so clear that we have a problem on our hands. And something special, special attention needs to be given to, not just the tankers, but special attention also needs to be given to um, the heavy duty vehicles of all categories, you know. Should I talk about the Dangote trucks? Now, Dangote has nothing to do with these vehicles. They were given out to these drivers you know, I think on a higher purchase or something arrangement, and they own them. But people probably call them Dangote trucks, but it has no affiliation with the company. These guys also drive recklessly. Those guys with trailers, I saw one, one uh, trailer, there's a video on, on, on social media. You know, this trailer truck was, was, was bearing a container, and I think he made a, a sharp turn and realized that the truck was trying to fall out. But he kept driving. So the whole thing capsized. You know, she would talk about containers that fall, all right? 40 feet containers that fall on people, cars, because of recklessness. Lives have been lost, and needlessly. See, the amount of bloodshed in this country is too much. So, what is calling, not just on the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency, but on, 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 on the Federal Safety Corps and the Nigeria Police Force, Traffic Management Department, and everybody needs to come together. Federal government, we need a special program, something to address the issue of death, death on our roads because of recklessness of these heavy duty vehicle um, drivers. All right, we need to address that. We won't go too much further than to leave it at that. And uh, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll look at what the papers are saying. Our guest is standing by. We'll tell you who he is. When we return, please stay with us. <laughs> 